Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Say, let me tell you about the new soap opera I heard the other morning. It's a slippery little stanza called John's Other Coffin. This program poses the question, can the murderous husband be happy with the spirit of his dead wife? <laughs> it seems everything went fine with his marriage till one night at dinner his wife asked him to pass the knife, which he did right through her. <laughs> then he hit her body at the town bell. And that's where he made a big mistake. Because the next morning she told on him. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Only the Dead Die Twice, was written by Ed Adamson and Bob Sloan and stars Larry Haynes in the role of Johnny with Alice Reinhardt as Vera. Well, folks, sit right down and make yourselves uncomfortable. If you don't see any murder you want, just ask for it. Ready for tonight's cataleptic continuity? Okay, then. Let's get to Johnny Bryce as he tells his story. It all started only four hours ago when I put the wagon away for the night. Ask me how I took a job like that, driving the hearse? Well, ask me and I'll tell you I needed a job. Any kind. But it's a job you never get used to. All the time there's that box riding in back of you. Four hours ago, I got out of the wagon and started to head for Joe's grill. But I never got to Joe's. Hello. She was standing at the door. Even in the bad light of the garage, she did things to a dress that knocked your eyes out. So I picked up my eyes and looked again. I've been waiting for you. All your life? An hour of it anyway, Johnny. Hey, you know my name. Mm-hmm. Johnny Bryce. I know a lot about you. That puts you one up on me. <laughs> I'm Vera Craig. I've got something that might interest you, Johnny. Vera, you've got plenty that interests me. I've got a thousand dollars. See? Hey, that stuff almost looks real. It is real, and it's all yours, Johnny. All you have to do for it is use that hearse. What? There's a body I want you to take away. Whose body? Alex. And uh, who is Alec? My husband. He's in our apartment. It's 23 Grove Street. Well, the parlor handles the orders. Why didn't you call them? I couldn't. Why not? My husband has been murdered. Oh. Then you call the cops. The cops like to know about things like that. I can't call the police. You see, I murdered Alec. <laughs> You killed him. Yeah. I murdered my husband. You say that like you say, pass me the sugar. It wasn't hard. He was rotten mean. I'm not sorry. I've got to get rid of the body. All you have to do, Johnny, is to get it out of the apartment and bury it. Take it out? A, d a dead body? That should be easy enough for you. Uh -uh. I'm not touching anything dead. But you're used to death. It's around you all the time. Yeah, it's around me. That's the trouble. You think I like it? You won't do it for me. Not for anybody. Not even for this. I told you. Not even for a thousand dollars. A thousand, Johnny. Ten one hundred dollar bills, see? Look, will you stop sticking that dough under my nose? You can do a lot with a thousand dollars, Johnny. Will you stop it? Think of what a thousand can do for you, Johnny. You say you don't like your job. I hate it. And you won't have to be sick with your work anymore. You can get away from it forever. Forever. This will be the last time you'll have to drive a hearse. All you have to do is get rid of Alec's body. A thousand dollars all for you. It'll free you, Johnny. What do you say? One thousand bucks. What do you think I say? I drove the wagon to the address Vera gave me and parked it in the side alley. The house was one of those broken-down brownstones. The halls were dingy and creepy. I was trying to find the door with the name Craig on it. 
The hall was so dark, I didn't see him standing there. You're looking for something, mister? What? Yeah, what's the matter, I scare you. What are you doing here? And that's just what I was going to ask you. I don't like people sneaking around these halls. I'm the super. Oh, oh, the super. Yeah, what do you want here? Uh, nothing. Well, then what are you looking at the doors for? I've been following you. Well, I'm, uh, trying to find a friend's apartment. Yeah, who's your friend? I can tell you in the apartment. Uh, no, thanks. Uh, you don't have to bother. I can find it. Look, mister, I don't like the way you act. Maybe I should call a cop. A cop? Yeah, you heard me. Oh, look, you don't have to call a cop. I told you, I'm looking for a friend. Yeah, but he still didn't tell me your friend's name. Okay. Okay, uh, he's Alec Craig. Oh, Mr. Craig, eh? Well, why didn't you say so? That makes things different. Mr. Craig's apartment's up on the next floor. Rear of the hall. Uh, rear of the hall. Thanks. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah? What, what is it? No use going up there. Mr. Craig ain't home. But I have. Yeah, he ain't home. He ain't been home all evening. If he was home, I'd have seen him come in, sure. Okay, then I'll talk to Mrs. Craig instead. Mrs. You can't do that, mister. He ain't married. There ain't no Mrs. Craig. What kind of a gag was this? The super said there wasn't any Mrs. Craig. And who was Vera? Well, after the super walked away, I went upstairs. The door to Craig's apartment was part open. I pushed it the rest of the way and walked in. The living room was as cold and gloomy as a morgue. I wanted to turn and go out, but something kept pulling me. Ask me and I'll tell you it was death. You couldn't see it, but you knew it was there and you couldn't make it let go of you. Put me right through to the next room. Alec Craig was there, just as Vera said. On his white shirt, there was a big red circle. And on the floor next to him, a carving knife. Stained with the same red. I walked out of the room. A thousand bucks and no thousand bucks. I couldn't touch him, not for a million. I got to the front door and opened it. Hello. He was standing there in the hall right in front of the door. A big guy in a black hat and coat. I was just going to ring the bell. My name's Steve Maxton, detective, first grade, 16th precinct. You Alec Craig? Uh, no, no, I'm a friend of Craig's. Oh, I want to see Craig. Well, he's, uh, he's at home. Who are you? Johnny Bryce. You're sure Bryce is Craig isn't home? Uh, I just told you it wasn't. Nobody's in there. Okay, then suppose you come inside with me. We'll wait for Craig. Well, he, he's not coming back tonight. Go on, do like I tell you. Get inside. What is this? What do you want with me? I just got a call to get over here. The guy who called said there was a murder. A uh, murder? That's right. He said that Alec Craig was here in his apartment. Dead. If I had gotten out of that apartment a minute before, this never would have happened to me. But now I was stuck warn you, Bryce, don't try any phony moves. Oh, you got this wrong, Maxim. Somebody's playing a gag on you. Maybe. Craig isn't here. You can see nobody's here. Well, look in the next room. There wasn't a thing I could do. When we went into the room where Craig was, I kept my eyes straight ahead. I didn't want to look down and see him again. I guess you were right, Bryce. Somebody was playing a gag on me. It wasn't possible. I, I couldn't believe it. There wasn't a body on the floor. There wasn't a murder knife. There wasn't a single trace of death. Maxton went out and left me there alone. I stood right on the spot where Craig's dead body had been. My head spinned around like one of those kids' tops that makes that whirling sound. The sound was my own voice asking myself a hundred questions, questions that didn't have any answers. And the whirling sound got worse and worse. And all of a sudden, it's Hello, Johnny. Vera. What's the matter, Johnny? Aren't you glad to see me? How'd you get here, Vera? How'd you get into that closet? There's a back entrance to the apartment. Look, what's going on here? There was a body right here on the floor. I saw it with my own eyes. Yes, Johnny, you saw Alex's body. I put it in the closet. To save you. If that Detective Maxton had found it, then you'd be in trouble, wouldn't you? You said Craig was your husband. He was. You're a liar. The super told me Craig wasn't married. He wasn't your husband, was he? 
Was he? All right, he wasn't. Why'd you lie to me? Because I wanted to make sure you'd help me. What kind of a game are you playing? When I told you I killed Craig, that was the truth. Why'd you kill him? Because he deserved to die. He was blackmailing me. Johnny, you've got to get him out of here quickly. Oh, no. I'll meet you out at Mount Crescent Cemetery. All you have to do is carry him down the back stairs to the hearse. Nothing to it. I'm not going to touch him. I, I couldn't put my hands on him. A thousand dollars, Johnny. It's still waiting for you. I don't want the thousand anymore. Here, Johnny, I'll give you half of it now. No. When you finish out at the cemetery, you'll get the rest. No, I said... Here, take the five hundred. I told you, no. Now, look what you've done. You only have to pick it up. I'm not going to pick it up. I don't want any party of lousy dough. Keep it. The deal's off. Oh, no, Johnny. The deal isn't off at all. Not a bit. You're going to do exactly as agreed. Money or no money, you've got to. Now. Now? What do you mean? You told me you spoke to the super. He saw you here. They'll find Craig's body if you don't take it out. So they'll find it, so what? That detective, Maxton, he knows you now, Johnny. The detective remembers a face. They're good at that. If Craig's body is found, you'll be blamed for the murder. Why, you dirty little... So that's it. Yeah, that's it. And there's nothing you can do about it, Johnny. Absolutely nothing. I carried Alan Craig down the back stairs to the wagon. I always thought the dead were cold and stiff. But they're not that way at all. Craig hung over my shoulder like a warm rag doll. And with each step down those dark stairs, he bounced. And his face touched mine. With each step, a scream broke loose down deep inside of me. And I had to bite my tongue to keep the scream from coming out. I finally got him to the wagon. I dropped him to the box. And I closed the lid. He was there in the box, but I could still feel his weight on my shoulder. His face brushing against mine. I shut the back door and walked to the front of the wagon. Where are you going, what? Bryce? Max, I said, where are you going? Uh, what, what are you doing here? You still didn't answer my question. Uh, to the garage. I'm uh, putting the wagon away for the night. You didn't tell me you drove a hearse. You didn't ask me. Didn't I? No. Well, then I guess I didn't ask. I was waiting out front. You didn't come out that way. Oh, there are back stairs. I... Uh, had my wagon parked here in the alley. Then why didn't you go in through the back? Huh? You went in the front way. How did you know? Oh, maybe I was outside when you got him. Maxton, who are you? You saw my badge. I'm a cop. What do you got in that hearse? Just a box. What's in the box? Nothing. Sure? It's empty. And you wouldn't mind if I had a look. But let go of my arm. I tell you, the box is empty. What are you so nervous about? Your hand shaking like a leaf. Look at the box. I swear, there's nothing in it. That's what you said. What are you going to do? Hmm, nothing, Bryce. Like you said, the box is empty. I'll see you around sometime. Soon. Baxton walked out of the alley, got into a car, and drove off. What was the game they were playing, Vera and Baxton? Why did Baxton let me off so easy? I drove the wagon out of the alley and... Headed for Mount Crescent Cemetery where Vera was supposed to be waiting. When I got to the river drive, I started to breathe again. Well, I was lucky after all. I steered Maxton off. And I noticed there was a car behind me. I knew who it was. Maxton. That's why he let me off so he could tell me. I slammed the gas down all the way. He stayed right behind, the same distance. There was a curve ahead. I ran up the turn and then cut off to the side of the road. I killed the lights and waited. Maxon's car whipped by. I got out of there fast and took a back road to my date with Vera at the cemetery. What took you so long, Johnny? Well, Maxon told me, Vera, but... I shook him off. What is it, Johnny? The the way you look. Here in the moonlight. 
What's the matter with the way I look? There's something about you that reminds me. Reminds you of what, Johnny? Death. Yeah, that's something alive or real. Here's the shovel. You'll dig the grave over there near that tree. No. No, I, I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. This way, Johnny. Stand where you are, Bryce. Maxton. Thought you got rid of me, eh? Maxton, believe me. I had nothing to do with it. It was all her idea. I didn't want to come out here. You picked a Lulu this time, Vera. So you found out, Steve. What are you going to do? What is this? A nice yellow Lulu. He tries to pin it all on you. What are you two talking about? Now, this is the spot where you two have been meeting. Meeting? Cut the act, Bryce. I don't get that. You're wasting your breath. That's not going to save you. I told my wife if I ever caught her... Here is your wife. No use, Johnny. There's nothing we can do about it now. But I'll don't... find out everything about us. Maxton was holding the gun level at Vera. She was right. He'd find out everything. Craig's body was a few yards away in that wagon. I couldn't let Maxton find that body. I waited a second. I jumped out. I saw the gun fly out of his hand. I held him by the coat collar. He brought his right all the way around. I ducked just to find him. Then I buried my fist in the middle. I heard the wind go out of him. Then he dropped to the ground. Come on, Vera. Let's get out of here. No, Johnny. He'll be around soon. We can't go yet, Johnny. Don't you see? See what? He'll find you. No matter where you go, he'll find you. I know him. He'll hang for Alec Craig's murder. But I didn't kill Craig. You did. we will both hang. He'll fix it that way. You won't have a chance. Here. Take this. Gun? It's his. What? Well, what do you want me to do? Take it, Johnny. You know what you've got to do. Kill him. Kill him? the only way out for you now. You've got to kill him. But I can't. I can't. All you do is pull the trigger. It's so simple. He shoved the gun into my hand. The metal of it burned my palm like a hot poker. Hurry up, Johnny. Shoot. I couldn't lift my hand. Hurry, before it's too late. She picked up my hand and aimed the gun at him. Before it's too late, Johnny. Maxton was laying in the moonlight, quiet and still. I closed my eyes against the sight of him. Then I felt her finger press mine. I buried Maxton. All the time I shoveled, Vera stood there watching. That same devil's smile on her face. After I dug another grave, I went back to the wagon to get Craig's body. I opened the little box and reached it. Vera! I sat there in the dark of the wagon, my, my brain not believing what my hands touched. The insides of the empty box. Vera! didn't come. I got out of the wagon and started for the grave. Vera! Vera, he's not here, but... Vera's gone, Bryce. What? It was Craig. Alec Craig. Standing right there in the pass in front of me. She's gone, Bryce. Hey, you're, you're dead. I put you in the box. You're dead. Here, Bryce, touch my hand. No, stay away from me. Touch me, Bryce. Feel how dead I am. Don't, don't, don't you come near me. <laughs> You don't have to be afraid, Bryce. I'm not dead, not really. You are, you are. She killed you. That that blood on your shirt, that's where the knife... blood? Yes, I admit it is realistic. But it's only a combination of red ink and grease. But it did get the effect Vera and I wanted. You really thought I was dead. (laughs) You're such a chump, Bryce. Why did you do this to me? Why me? We had to get her husband out of the way. We wanted him dead, but only a chump commits murder. A chump you can buy a thousand dollars or with fear. <laughs> You're having a good time, huh, Craig? Oh, terrific. You're not going to get away with this. No? What are you going to do about it, Bryce? Go to the police? Tell them the story? Sure. You do that. Tell them how you held the murder gun. How your fingers squeezed the trigger. She made me Tell that to the police, Bryce. Tell them. And let me know what they say. I'll, uh... I'll be waiting to hear about it. He walked down the path, laughing at me. Me, the prize chump of them all. Well, this chump had one idea. One good idea that was really going to kill him. I started the wagon and headed it down the path. I caught Craig in my headlights. He turned. That hyena smile was still on him. Then when he saw what I was going to do, the laugh dropped off his face. 
He jumped to the side of the path and ran up the hill. I drove right up after him. He twisted and turned, but I didn't let him out of the headlights. He was just getting to the tomb at the top of the hill when I stepped down all the way. Alec, what took you so long? Hello, Vera. Johnny. What's the matter? Aren't you glad to see me? What are you? What are you doing here? We'll talk about it inside. There's nothing to talk I about. I said I'm coming in. Get out of here. It's no way to treat an old friend. Craig told me all about it. How you framed me into the murder. Of course he told you. It was all my idea. Cute idea. I told you before. There's nothing we have to talk about it, so you might as well leave. You're expecting Craig, is that right, Vera? None of your business now. Either you get out. Craig or... won't be here. What? He couldn't make it, Vera. On account of his dead. <laughs> That's right, good and dead. <laughs> you should have heard him scream when the wagon hit him. You should have heard him, Vera. You're lying. You wouldn't do a thing like that. You're not a murderer. Sure I am, Vera. You made me a murderer. You remember this gun, don't you, Vera? Johnny, listen. All you do is pull the trigger. It's so simple, remember? Johnny, that's a that, thousand that dollars. Oh, yeah. I have a thousand. This is where I came in. You can have it now. You can do a lot with a thousand bucks. Right, Johnny, that's right. You can get away from everything you hate. You won't have to be near death anymore. You can be free of it forever. I... The phone. What are you... It's a thousand. Is it still all there, Vera? Johnny, yes, all of it. And it's yours now. You, you've earned uh, it. Operator. The police. Yes. Johnny, what are you doing? Why are you calling... Hello? Me? My name's Johnny Bryce. I want to report a murder. Oh, you crazy fool. They'll hang you. The one who was killed? Her name is Vera Max. No. The address is 23 Grove Street. It... The killer? Sure. His name is Johnny Bryce. No, John... Yeah, that's right. Me. Oh, I'll be waiting right here for you. Johnny, don't do it, please. You can you can have a thousand. Even more. Three thousand, Johnny. Five. L- listen, Johnny. Even even more than five. I'll get you as much as you want. Anything. Anything. Else. Just shoot me. Stop. Plenty of corpses and no remorses. Well, Johnny finally got the drop on Vera. But you should see the drop the hangman got on Johnny. There is a moral in tonight's tangy little tidbit. It comes from the grave works of the funeral philosopher, Wormley Digger, author of One Hearst Town. Now, how's it go? Oh, yes. When you plant a corpse, be prepared for anything. You can never tell what might come up. (laughs) Good night, pleasant dreams. Inner Sanctum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for service men and women overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Mm-hmm.